So when we began our unit on electricity here, we started with what's called electrostatics, looking at uh, charges and the forces between charges. Then we continued by building um, the concepts of electric field and electric potential. Now we're going to look at practical applications of those concepts. So think about when you press the power button on some electronic device, the, the, the device powers up because the electric potential of a battery causes the charges to move through the circuits in what we call a current. We can explain the operation of these devices using the physics of charges, electric fields, and electric potentials. The same physics behind charged rods that we did in electrostatics uh, apply to the circuits. So we're going to start by building a model of electric current. Now, electric current is simply the flow of charge carriers through a conductor. Now, in, in metals, those charge carriers are primarily electrons. Other materials, uh, like semiconductors, might have different charge carriers, could have uh, positive charges, be charge carriers. In ionic solutions like seawater, blood, intercellular fluids, the charge carriers are ions, both positive and negative ions. Uh, but for our purposes, we're going to consider charge carriers uh, as electrons. Okay. Now, there's, there's really only two things that we need in order for uh, us to have an electric current. First, we need a voltage source. Some source of potential difference. We get these from batteries, uh, generators, plug in a device into the wall, you're, you're getting a voltage source. The second thing that we need is a complete path for the electrons to move. Okay, uh, So if we want to hook up a light bulb, we can take a battery, we can take a couple, uh, a couple of wires, we can uh, put the wires on one end of a battery, put the, uh, hook them through the, the bulb, we light up the bulb. If we don't have a voltage source, we can't light our bulb. If we don't have a complete path, we can't light our bulb. The way these charge carriers work is uh, depicted right here. See, we've got, uh, we've got the atoms that make up some conductor. And uh, throughout a metal conductor, we have conduction electrons, usually about one per atom. They're bound to the solid as a whole, not to any particular atom. It creates what we call this sea of electrons um, through this, this conducting material. And uh, the metal as a whole is electrically neutral, but these charge carriers, these free electrons, are able to move through that conductor. So these free electrons, or conduction electrons is what they're also called, are the charge carriers. They are what move charge from one place to another. Now there are two kinds of current that we sort of uh, think about. We can talk about uh, DC current, uh, which stands for direct current. Uh, we could also talk about, I'm sorry, circuits, DC circuits, uh, or we could also talk about AC circuits, which are uh, alternating current. We're going to be dealing primarily with the DC circuits. I'm uh, not going to talk much, if at all, about uh, AC circuits. So, how do we create a current? How does a current come about? So imagine you have a, a book and you want to push that book across a table at a constant speed. In order to push that book at a constant speed, you have to uh, push with a constant force. In a conductor, this constant force is provided by an electric field. The electric field exerts a force on the electrons and they begin to move and collide with one another. And these collisions transform the kinetic energy of the electrons into thermal energy in the conductor, making the conductor a little bit warmer. And, and so a current, if we can get a little bit more specific in our definition then of current, a current is a motion of charges sustained by an internal electric field. Okay, so then the question becomes, why is there an electric field in a current-carrying wire? Where does this field come from? So let's think about a, a key piece of information from our last unit. 
And that is, any time we have a potential difference, we're going to have an electric field pointing from higher potential to lower potential. Whenever we connect a source of electric potential to a circuit, like a battery, for instance, we're placing a separation of charges into the circuit. Uh, as we'll look at a little bit here, about, we'll look more specifically at batteries, about how we get that separation of charge. But for right now, we're just going to accept that in a battery, we have separation of charge. We're putting that separation of charge into a circuit. So initially, there is a separation of charges between the two plates of the battery. We connect a wire between the two plates, establishing an electric field in the wire. And this electric field causes electrons to flow from the, the negative plate of the battery to the positive side. In other words, it's the potential difference that creates a current in a wire. Now, a really important piece of information to get uh, from this is, let's think about current uh, flows like water through a pipe that's already full of water. If we were to add, so we, um, imagine we have a pipe that is full of water and we add one drop of water to one end of that pipe, what's going to happen out the other end of that pipe? We're going to get one water drop of water to fall out of that pipe. Now, it's not going to be the same drop of water that we had down here at this end uh, come out of this end. It's going to be a different drop of water, but it'll be the same amount of water come out of this end, out of from this end, that we put into one end. Current works uh, the same kind of way. The wire is already full of electrons when we hook it up to, so, to a potential difference. As soon as some excess electrons move from the source of potential difference, the battery... Uh, an equal number of electrons are immediately pushed out the other end of the wire, and we have a current flow. Now, right up here, I, I said a, a key piece of information that I, I hope you caught a little bit. I talked about current flowing, charges flowing from the negative plate to the positive plate. Okay, Charges flowing from the negative plate to the positive plate. Now, the way that we define current... We need to look at this a little bit more, okay? Um, you have to remember that an electric field sets up from higher potential to lower potential, okay? So our electric field points downhill, right? From higher potential to lower potential. Electrons, our charge carriers, move... So that, Okay, so the electric field, remember, points in the direction then that, charge, that positive charges would move if positive charges moved. Our charge carriers are electrons. They move in the direction uh, opposite the electric field. So, so when I said earlier over here about charges moving from the negative plate to the positive plate, that's the direction of charges moving. It's not the direction of current. We consider the direction of current to go from the positive plate to the negative plate. The reason that we talk about charge moving from the positive plate to the negative plate is because before we before we knew what charge carriers were, current direction was defined as the direction positive charges would move, which would be in the direction of the electric field. Okay, the electric field points from the positive plate to the negative plate, from higher potential to lower potential. So what we the direction of current in a metal is opposite the direction of motion of the electrons. The electrons move this direction. The current we consider moving this direction. The easy way to remember this and to just sort of get your mind around that is just to remember that the direction of current is the direction a positive charge would move if positive charges were the charge carriers. Also, easy way to remember the direction of current is from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. Okay, we define current then as a rate, the rate of charge over time. Okay, so imagine, uh, you, you know, you go driving down the road and you see, uh, sometimes you're driving down the road and you, you see the little plastic doohickey on the side and it's got a little box over there. What they're doing is they're, the traffic engineers are counting the number of cars that pass through a specific point. Okay, and right over there we get the measure of those cars. Current is the same kind of way. So the, the cars 
are the charges and we're measuring over time. Now, uh, current is given the symbol I. It's measured. That's current. And current is measured in amps. Amperes. We are, or amps. We abbreviate with an A. So say we've got uh, you know some light bulb. Well, we'll call it a 75 watt light bulb. It carries a, a current of uh, 0.78 amps. Uh, we want to know how much charge um, runs through that thing in uh, one minute. And uh, we apply I equals Q over T. You work through that. We get 46.8 coulombs of charge per minute. Okay, so on to uh, batteries and something we call EMF. So a battery consists of uh, chemicals called electrolytes sandwiched in between the two electrodes made of different materials. The energy that uh, uh, to move charges comes from chemical reactions uh, between the electrolytes and uh, the electrodes, the, the plates of the battery. Now your, your reading goes into a little bit of battery history there. You should take a look at that. I'm going to go right into how batteries work. How batteries work, kind of like a, a charge escalator uh, between the two terminals. Charges are, are removed from this uh, negative plate here, and they're lifted up the little escalator to the positive plate, where they're allowed to then move, fall down through the circuit. Okay, so this little charge escalator lifts the charge from the negative plate to the positive plate, and the charge gains potential energy as it moves up, and the charge falls downhill through the wire, uh, but it can be uh, sustained because of that charge escalator. As those charges come back this way, lift it back up, fall back through. Down here, zero potential energy. Up here, we got potential energy that's equal to QV, and that V is the, the electric potential of that battery. Now, it's chemical reactions that do uh, the work to move the charge from the negative plate to the positive plate. And in an ideal battery, in which there's no internal energy losses, the, the, ga the charge gains uh, electric potential energy, equal to the work done by that chemical reaction. Uh, so this would be analogous to a book gaining gravitational potential energy when you do work to lift it from the floor to a shelf, for example. So, this idea then, the amount of work done per charge, gives us a uh, potential difference for that battery. So the potential difference of that battery is equal to the work that's done per charge to, to lift them up the, the charge escalator. This, uh, this work per charge we call the EMF of the battery, which is abbreviated with this little script E like that. In other words, what this means is that the uh, potential difference of a battery, which if you look on the side of a battery, they're using you know, your, your C cells, your A's, your triple A's, they're all 1.5 volts. That uh, potential difference of the battery is called its EMF. Now, whether it's a, it's a battery or an electric generator or a photocell or whatever kind of power supply, whatever uh, it is, they all use different means to separate charge, uh, but otherwise they, they function much like a battery. Uh, the common feature of all such devices is that they use some source of energy to separate charge and thus to create a potential difference. So then, question is, as a battery creates a current in a circuit, the reactions, the chemical reactions that run that little charge escalator, deplete the chemicals in the battery. However, some batteries you can recharge uh, by forcing current into the positive terminal. You're not really recharging it. You're not adding more charge to the battery. So what is it that you're doing uh, to uh, the battery when you recharge it? How is it you're replenishing it? Well, if when you recharge a battery if you are shoving current into the positive direction and current normally flows positive to negative remember if we're shoving current into that positive direction into that positive terminal you're reversing the direction of that current if you're reversing the direction of the current 
you're reversing the chemical reactions that produce the EMF in the battery, uh, replenishing the chemicals in the battery and storing energy as a result. So now, a lot of devices uh, want to uh, use multiple batteries uh, to make them run. So say you've got some device and that uh, calls for uh, three batteries, all 1.5 volts, connected up like this in, in what we call a series. The question is, what is the, the total potential difference of this? Well, we can think of this as, as three different little charge carriers right here, where we've got charges down here, we lift up to here, and then we lift it up to another floor, and we lift it up another floor. Uh, each, each one lifts the charges to a higher potential. Because each battery raises the potential by 1.5 volts, the total potential difference of all three batteries is 4.5 volts. Okay, so there, that's current. Uh, really conceptual, um, just make sure you understand direction of current, what the charge carriers are, how, uh, how the direction of current actually goes, or we consider it positive to negative, uh, but what's really happening within the little metal um, as, as it does that. Understand the uh, definition of current, um, and then uh, uh, EMF is, the, the EMF is the potential difference of a battery, essentially. From here, we're going to move on uh, to kind of connecting a potential and current in uh, the next one.